Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank you for joining us and for participating with us in this venture of reading through the word of the Lord to get through it in a single year. And today we're going to be busy in the book of Isaiah again, continuing from yesterday. We're going to be focusing on chapters 31, 32, 33, and 34. So when we get into chapter 31, we continue from the passages yesterday in which the Lord admonishes his people for putting their trust in Egypt and for forsaking the Lord. Now, when we consider Egypt, and something that I didn't mention yesterday, but we have mentioned it along the way, is that Egypt is a representation of the world, or it types out the world and worldliness. Now, it's very important that we understand that in that, if we look at all of the imagery within the word and we think about Egypt being like the world, and then we see that we are drawn out of Egypt or we were taken captive by Egypt, but we were rescued from Egypt. And this is the story of Israel. They were rescued from worldliness. And this is what the church needs to be rescued from. As we read as well, we'll see this imagery of the horseman. And when we look at that later on in the scripture, we know that that is depicting the evil powers that would come into play at the end, at the time of the end. And so we see that there is so much imagery here. So take notice of that and how they fit in in this chapter. But the Lord will fight for his people when they put away the idols from among them. And he will destroy the Assyrian by the sword. Now when he talks about the Assyrian, we spoke about this yesterday. The Assyrian is a type of the devil. And he says the Assyrian will be destroyed by the sword or he will be slain by the sword. He will run away from the sword. What is the sword? The sword is the word of God. Now this is an image that we know is quite commonplace within Christendom, but it is actually mentioned in the word of God that the sword is the word of God. And so this is important that we understand that. So it's beautifully wrapped up, beautifully written, and there's so much imagery that we can draw from in here. Then we get to chapter 32, and in this chapter, the Lord describes the blessings and the beauty of the kingdom of Christ when he comes. And then we see this beautiful imagery pop up in verse 9, and it's talking about the woman. And it says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. And it starts talking about this, and the image that comes to light very quickly is that of the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. If we consider the five foolish virgins that are at ease, we will recognize that they have to go into the tribulation. And when you read this passage here, it can very quickly bring that to light if you tie in those passages together. It's an amazing passage again with beautiful imagery again, but very hard in the message against those that are at ease, against those that are lazy, against those that do not put their trust in the Lord and search out the word of the Lord. Then we get to chapter 33, and this chapter speaks about God's judgment against the enemies of his people. The prophet cries to the Lord for mercy. Now we see the fate of those that trust in themselves and those that trust in the Lord. And it separates it on two ends. And if we look at that in the light of the Lord separating the sheep and the goats, and we see how the Lord will deal with those that are righteous, those that are the sheep of God, versus those who put their trust in themselves, who put their trust in Egypt, who put their trust in their vanity, we see how the Lord will deal with that as well. And then we get to chapter 34. And here it deals with the judgments that the Lord uses to avenge his people. He prophesies against Edomia, which is actually Edom. Now, Edom is an amazing place in that it was of the descendants of Esau. But we see that judgments have been prophesied against it for so long because Edom did not help uh, Israel when they were at war. In fact, Edom coaxed the enemies on and they even pillaged uh, Israel when Israel were defeated in battle. But another thing about Edom is they had some of the most sophisticated architecture and things along the way. 
If we look at uh, Petra, the city of Petra, that was part of Edom. And so when you think that the Lord says he's going to destroy Edom and he talks about the destruction that would befall them, and you think to yourself, how can this possibly be? And yet when you look at the city of Petra today, you just see that it is quite desolate, that it is that this prophecy has actually come to pass and that the Lord is so true concerning his word. One more thing you must remember about Edom or Edomia is King Herod at the time of the birth of the Lord Jesus was from Edomia. So there's something very interesting in there. When we get to that, I'm going to refer back to this and we're going to look at that together. But then we are given the surety of prophecy. And here the prophet talks about how sure a word of prophecy is. Now this is confirmed again later when we see it in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. Peter says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. The previous verse was talking about something that he had eyewitnessed. But he is saying, even more sure than me witnessing something with my very eyes is the word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So this is so blessed when we think about the word of prophecy, that the word of prophecy is sure, it is true, and there is nothing that can cause it to fail. Now this is where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 31. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise, and will bring evil, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men, and not God and their horses flesh and not spirit. For the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is holpen shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day, every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomfited. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace in Jerusalem. Chapter 32 Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. 
Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. And it shall hail coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters, that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. Chapter 33 Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of thyself, the nations were scattered. And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highways lie waste. The wayfaring man ceaseth. He hath broken the covenant. He hath despised the cities. He regardeth no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness. And Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits. Now will I rise, saith the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. Ye shall conceive chaff. Ye shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime. As thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. Hear ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. 
but there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Thy tacklings are loosed, they could not well strengthen their mast, they could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided, the lame take the prey. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Chapter 34 Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever but the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest, and lay and hatch, and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. <laughs>